Hi guys, Knife Detector here. And what we have here is a honey crisp apple, I believe is what it's called. And these apples are pretty darn big. I mean, as far as apples go, this is bigger than most red delicious apples that I've seen. Looks like it's about uh, four and a half inches across. This thing is huge. I like apples and uh, I like apples almost as much as I like sunfish knives. Check out this beautiful B A beautiful John Primble, 1999, abalone scale, India steel knife. Now, right now, y'all are really excited, and you're thinking, well, honey knife detector, that is a fantastic knife you got there. Where did you get it? Now, I know what you're thinking. Knife detector, that is a rare knife, and you'd be right. Um, this is uh, what they call a reproduction knife. These were made around the 1990s by the John Primble Company, which I believe is now owned by a company called Bluegrass Cutlery. And these were basically reproductions of older versions, and they only made 20 of these knives in each type of handle material. Do you know what that means? There's only 19 other abalone knives like this somewhere in the world that were made in 1999. Okay, now you're probably thinking, knife detector, how much did you pay for that knife? Well, I paid about close to 35 bucks for it. I paid about 33 bucks for this thing before shipping. But the thing is, is it's not perfect. And let me show you what the deal is. See, this knife at one point was smashed. And I wouldn't say smashed, but damaged right here in the acrylic that's over the abalone. See that? It's got a crack. Plus, this knife was carried considerably. Check out these pictures I'm about to show you of what it looked like before I gave it a little bit of a cleaning. Now, realistically, this knife will never be like it was before, and I wouldn't want to mess with it. Uh, I'm just going to hold on to it and carry it as is. But it was pretty bad when I first got it, and I've done a little bit of cleaning to it since then, and I'm going to carry it as is. But let me show you what it looked like before the cleaning. Okay, so you can see it had a lot of carbon buildup. For that reason, I think this might be 1095 stainless or some type of a carbon steel. There you can see I'm still trying to get some of that uh, corrosion and uh, carbon buildup out of the way. But there's also lots of micro pitting in there. But look at that beautiful long nail neck. And then it's got this little nail neck right here. Now let me tell you a little bit about this knife. I asked the seller if she knew anything about this. And it's a really good eBay seller. I asked her, hey, can you give me any history on the knife? As I often do. She said, no, nah, man, I just got it from an old man at a yard sale. Bought it from an old man at a yard sale. I didn't dare ask her how much she paid for it. But it's a beautiful knife. Now, the old man at the garage sale, he probably carried this knife for 20 years in his pocket. Because check this out. This type of wear right here usually happens when you've been carrying it in your pocket for years. And then moisture comes down to where you were holding it. This was on the bottom like this, probably resting in his pocket just like so. Moving around, rubbing with the moisture he might have in his pocket from sweat. So basically, I have a piece of that old man in this knife, right? He left a piece of himself in this knife, and I'm going to continue to add to that. And I'm going to carry it in my pocket. Now, this was really dark right here, and notice the wear right here on this nail nick. Look how smooth that nail nick is, man. That tells me that this was wearing in his pocket for quite a long time right now this part was totally black when i got it and i've done my best to clean some of that um it's got some corrosion from moisture and some micro pitting in there and 
and uh, but it's still a great looking knife. Check out the monstrous crack right here. Now, when I saw the pictures, you know, uh, on eBay, I zoomed in. I thought to myself, self, I could probably try and seal that with something. You know, I've heard people that use super glue to seal that crack. Uh, notice how it doesn't go all the way on this side, but it does on this side. Notice coincidentally, that's also where this this uh, big uh, chunk is missing from the spring. Uh, so. This has had a lot of use in somebody's pocket and I can only imagine that somebody dropped it and smashed it or maybe this is a result of just carrying it in your pocket. If he's a big guy like me, you know, sometimes we bump into stuff and when you're carrying around a lot of weight like I am and you bump into something, whatever you have in your pocket is going to feel the strength of that bump and if it's something that's breakable you could break something in your pocket by just bumping into stuff or you could break stuff by bumping into stuff like has happened to me a great deal of occasions so anyway what they did i, I believe is they they kind of sanded this down a little bit because it's a little bit uh thinner on this section than it is in the upper section and i believe they sealed it with some type of a uh, adhesive more than likely super glue and uh, I went ahead and I uh, I decided I'm just going to leave it as is because it looks like they did a good enough job. It's pretty solid. None of those pieces are moving and I probably would have done something similar myself. So other than that, I'm just going to carry this beauty. But check out this side. This side is just beautiful, guys. Look at that. I'm enamored with this knife. I really am. I already carried it today. I went to Goodwill, a couple of different Goodwills today and checked out uh, different things over there. See if I find any uh, vintage items. And, and then I carried this bad boy in my pocket with me. This thing just feels so good in my pocket. But enough of the outside. Let's look at the inside. Let's start with a small blade first, guys. What do you say? So you can see right there, it was closed for a real long time. and started to corrode with the inside of the the brass liner and I cleaned out some uh, green and black cook from the inside of the brass liner so the small blade was not used much so nice little snap after I give it a little cleaning it says John Primble India Steel now my understanding of India Steel is that it was used into the into the 1940s or so uh, and it was a good high quality steel that John Primble uh, company used to use back then um, as far as what type of steel India steel is I really don't know I really don't know if it's uh, 440 or if it's some type of a carbon steel alloy which I suspect it might be some type of a carbon steel alloy some type of carbon steel mixed with other metals but all I can find is that this is a very good reputable type of steel and uh, and it has a uh, good ratings so I love this this tip right here it's kind of like kind of like a spear point blade uh, drop point but I mean it just goes straight down and this is just perfect if you want to stab something with it which uh, we might use it for this guy in a little bit so check it out and on this side you have the year of manufacture for this knife is 1999 so this knife has been cruising around somebody's pocket uh, quite clearly since 1999 let's open her up this side Grab that little nail nick there. Very good snap. Of course, that's after I cleaned it some. John Primble India Steel Works. It says on the bottom, you can't make it out. And this model is 5312. And check out that pitting, guys. This was totally black when I first got it. This was black, 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 black when I first got it. And even though, you know, it still looks like you can see the micro pitting, I'm never going to get this the way it used to be. Uh, so realistically speaking, I'm going to have to just settle for it the way it is. But I'm so glad to have it because they were only 20 of these made in this handle configuration. And if you look super close, you can see that on the blade, it says uh, it's kind of etched in there. I don't know if you can see it. There's a stamp that says uh, John Primble. And then there's a badge, the John Primble badge, and then it says Finest Steel. See, the Primble, John Primble Finest Steel. Um, I really like this knife very much, even in its current condition. Um, just want to let you know, guys, these things are out there. You know, if you keep your eyes open and you really start, you know, scanning every now and then, or you do a search on eBay and or you put in there something like unknown knife, you know, you'd be uh, uh, very fortunate to find one of these. Um, so they're out there, guys. And, you know, I like uh, this pattern of knife very much. You know, I do love the Sunfish pattern knives. Like I said in the previous video, um, I am going to have more of these videos coming out this is the first of a series of six i'm gonna do uh, i ended up buying more of these knives guys um i just can't 
keep my hands off of them really you know i just can't uh stop you know uh buying those things they're just gorgeous knives right so because of that you know i wanted to make this quickie video and maybe use it a little bit for you guys to see uh that i do use my knives you know in fact i gain great pleasure in using my knives because uh i get to open them up i get to sharpen them and and if you're like me sometimes you get into this zen mode you know when you're doing a little bit of knife sharpening or knife maintenance and and you start uh really getting into it and enjoying yourself you know and uh kind of like meditation for us knife guys you know so that's only if you're like me and i suspect that if you collect knives then you might just be like me right so in any case you know just a little quick uh apple slicing here for me because i do like apples very much and i think what i'm going to do with this apple is i'm going to drizzle some honey over it and uh, have that as a nice snack because it's getting close to dinner guys and i'm actually hungry already i don't know if you know but i have been on a diet i've lost about 50 pounds um trying to get in better physical condition and uh i um dropped 50 pounds and i'm hoping to drop another 30 or so i think if i drop another 30 i'll be much more comfortable so knife detector what does that bring you at you might ask what did you weigh before well i weighed about 324 and uh now i'm in the 274 275 range something like that so you know i have a ways to go i'm trying trying to get in better physical condition and physical shape get back to my high school weight actually this is my high school weight but Maybe I can do a little bit better. All right, guys, this has been The Knife Detector signing off, you know, saying keep your knives sharp, keep your wits even sharper. God bless you, my friends. And there's about five or six more elephant toe slash sunfish videos coming. If you like this pattern of knife, you may not want to miss those. Take care, my friends. Just a little drizzle of honey. A little drizzle of honey. Just a little bit. Don't want to go crazy with the honey, guys. Okay, maybe a little more. Just a little bit more. Okay, you only live once, guys. Go for it. All right, that's it. Thanks, guys. Bye.